six, my mother said, come over here. I said, what, what do you mean? She said, you're over there, come over here. <laughs> I remember when I was a fetus, I used to sneak out at night when my mom went to sleep. <laughs> off the plane and forgot to undo my seatbelt and was pulling the plane through the terminal and knocking people over. <laughs> oh man. Hey, welcome to the Closing Beat, everybody. How you doing today? Welcome, welcome to our show here. We talk about the stock markets here and all kinds of other good stuff, but we try to keep it stats-based, so we're going to cover a lot today. We've got a lot going on, actually, so I uh, hope you're ready. hope it's all good there. Yeah, I, it looks good back there. Got a different light to it today or something. Uh, all right, here we go. Um, we're also going to start breaking the, the closing beat into segments if you're interested. And if you're a client tonight, Wine & Wealth, we're going to talk about PMI. Should you take some cash that you have and pay off your PMI or do something else with it or do nothing with it? What should you do? How do you quantify that? Well, we're going to go through an actual example of a client that uh, had that question. So it's all good. We're going to share that with you. We'll come up with a couple different scenarios. We can even run scenarios for you. We'll be doing that tonight in the Speakeasy uh, at uh, 8 o'clock tonight. So hope you'll join us there for that. Uh, let's get started with the stock market here today. You may have noticed uh, old Biden uh, has a new tax. Well, he's pushing his tax plan now. Uh, that did push the markets a little bit lower throughout the day there. You can see they finished lower for the most part. The Russell held up pretty good there. Uh, capital gains tax is going to look to raise that, which was a campaign promise. And uh, I have a feeling that it's going to be on people that make less than a million dollars, but that's where they're starting. We'll see what happens there. And the markets care. I mean, it was like right away. Let's go over to the markets here and take a look. We take a look at the uh, even just the s and I'll take a look at a five minute chart just to show you. Can you guess where the announcement came out? We were higher on the day, just by a little bit. It wasn't that big of a deal, but we were higher on the day. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute, you're going to tax me higher capital gains? I think I'll just sell my positions now then while the markets are at highs. That's essentially what happened there. And if you look, the NASDAQ was the hardest hit. The reason for that is because you've got those uh, sort of higher valued companies, the um, you know that are trading at higher multiples at the moment. Well, you know, why would you keep money in something like that if you know you're going to be taxed higher? What are you looking for, right? So that one got hit the hardest uh, throughout the day, and it caused us to continue this baby little pullback that we're attempting here. The NASDAQ still up 7% year to date. Um, the biggest drags today were your large cap stocks and your semiconductors. So Apple down 1% on the day. Microsoft is always an obvious one. Uh, that one finally looking like it's going to end its uh, little rally that it's been in. Amazon pulling back inside the range. That's a snoozer, of course. And Tesla uh, pulling back as well. For semiconductors, you had NVIDIA. Nice pullback on that one. Now, I welcome a pullback on semiconductors, so I'm not upset by that at all. Uh, Micron, one of the bigger pullback stocks out of the group here today. And it, oh, nope, nope. Intel. Uh, another one, back below the 50-day moving average, losing about 2% on the day. If you look at the Dow, the Dow is up about 11% year to date. Uh, sort of a mixed day. To, uh, not a mixed day. Obviously, it was down on the day. But if we go over to the Dow, you had a couple names that stayed positive, just barely. I mean, they probably would have went negative if the market closed you know, an hour later or something. Salesforce up uh, about a third of a percent. McDonald's up about a third of a percent. The rest were either a wash or down on the day. We'll cover some of the news on that one. Uh, you got Dow Chemical uh, back under the 50-day moving average. First time since earlier this year. Financials, JP Morgan was lower on the day and your semiconductors in the, inside that space. Of course, there's less stocks to take a look at. Uh, if we look at the S&P 500 there, it's up about 11% year to date. Over half of the gains have come uh, for the year in the last one month there. Uh, the gainers today in the S&P 500, those are going to be your earnings related stocks. Uh, so if you're looking at the top, top, top of the list, your performers, Equifax coming out with earnings there, Pool Corp coming out with earnings, uh, AT&T with earnings, 4% gain, pretty sizable gain for AT&T, uh, and the rest as you make your way through that there. We'll cover a little bit more uh, as we go there. Um, now, for the S&P 500, how many times, it's just a simple question for you here, how many times we were up 60%? Year, uh, over the last 12 months. I'm not saying year to date. So we were up 60% over the last 12 months. And I mentioned this about three or four weeks ago. How often does that happen when the S&P is actually up that much? Well, we could take a look. We could actually use our little tool here. And I didn't do this. Oh, I did do this earlier. Yeah, because I got a chart for you. So let's say how often in any 12-month period, doesn't have to be over uh, the course of January to December, but in any 20-month period, how often are we 60% higher 
uh, over a 12 month period. And I'll just go back probably as far as we can on the uh, SPY, we'll do 30 years. How often does that happen? It is, yeah, okay, it's twice. So uh, the only other time, right, we just currently did that, but the only other time was March 2nd, 2010. That is, in fact, the last time we were up that much. If I go on over here, I actually pulled a chart for you to show when that happens. So here is um, from basically March 2009 to March 2010. That's your 60-point rally. So notice that it's not calendar rally. It's just any rolling 12-month period. What happened after that? It happens to coincide with the exact time that we're in right now. Not only that, the correlation is almost as close to one as any other time, meaning the performance from these lows to these highs is almost identical to the performance of our lows to our highs minus the big sell-off. Um, and so what happened after that? We get into the summertime, we had a pretty steep little pullback there. So the market, I mean, there's very little data to go on, of course, right? I don't have a, like, tons of you know evidence to use here, um, but the market, pulled back a little. Ultimately though, what happened? Look off to the right. We put that there for you. It was up 20, almost 20% 20 in the next 12 months. Well, that also correlates to what happened over here. Yeah, sure, we had a pullback, but 12 months later, we were up just about 20%, 18% to be exact. 18.85 to be exactly exact. Uh, and so that pattern seems to be shaping itself to be what's happening now. I'm not saying that the markets pull back or anything, but with what you have to go on and what limited amount of times that the stock market has gained that much in a 12 month period, mm, you gotta think that eh, maybe, maybe all the overbought signals are starting to kind of show their face here. So uh, we'll see what happens there, but that's just what I wanted to share with you. Something a little different so we can move on to the sector breakdown. Let's see what's going on in the individual sectors today. Uh, Look, every sector closed down on the day. That leaves only seven of 11 sectors positive over the last five days. Uh, we're getting weaker by the day. We're adding more and more to that. Every sector was hit just as hard today on the Biden news, uh, if you take a look there. Sectors with the highest multiples had the bigger decline. So they were hit. Everything got hit at the same time. But higher multiple sectors like tech and communication services, they lost a greater percentage on the move. If we go over to, uh, well, let's do tech. So if we go over to tech, that was positive prior to the news on the day. Uh, then we started to sell off. It's all going to be due to the big two contributors of the tech sector, Microsoft and Apple. Uh, they were the biggest drags. But as you start looking through here, boy, you see a lot of semiconductor names. And if I click on one, you could see, well, we could click on any of them, really, because they're all grouped together. These were your biggest uh, losers on the day. So you've got the uh, uh, higher multiple, uh, sort of higher valued tech stocks moving uh, lower, as well as the semiconductors. In communication services, we had the same thing. I mean, this is just, you're going to see it on everything that you look at. We got ourselves a pullback here. Facebook and Twitter were the biggest contributors on the downside, tied with Google or Alphabet uh, for second place there. Uh, gaming. I thought this was interesting. Let's go over here and look at gaming. We'll look at the gains. Oops. Look at the gains on the day. Um, you've got Take Two, right? You've got Activision in here. The gamers held their own. You've got Dish Networks here riding that excitement from yesterday where they partnered up with Amazon. So a little bit still going on there. But other than that, that seemed to be where all the excitement was today that held its own relative to the markets. I mean, kind of taking a punch right there in the middle of the day. Uh, if we go over to basic materials, that comes in last place today was broad weakness. We can see it here. We can see it down here. Broad weakness today, the whole area just sells off. Turns out that yesterday's weakness in Freeport McMoran, uh, remember every stock was higher besides this one. It didn't quite finish positive on the day, but that may have been a little bit of a hint there. Of course, that one was down on the day as well. One other thing I want to point out to you, um, gold and silver. We'll go over here. So I like that you can see me. Uh, gold and silver. Interesting, right? Starting to wake up over here. Gold off its double bottom uh, low, kind of a significant downturn there while rates were kind of falling apart. Uh, so gold, or not falling apart, but bouncing, I should say. Um, off a double bat, uh, bottom technical uh, pattern that people like, above the 50-day moving average, starting a new uptrend there. Um, it's at its highest level since just before Valentine's, or just after Valentine's Day, really. And then if we take a look at silver, uh, we'll do silver futures on that one. Oh, let's do this guy. There you go. Uh, silver at its highest level since March 2nd and currently outperforming gold. So if you're thinking commodities and things like that because yields are backing off their highs, that's the main catalyst for this. Uh, well, silver's outperforming gold, so that may be something that you take a look at first. If you look at that at all, but just throwing it out there. Uh, where's the, let's do this. Where's the, we have a new thing here. Um, SpyCam. 
I'm going to press a button and we're going to try to guess where the spy cam is at. So I found it. It's over there. I found it. There's the spy cam coming through the speakeasy there. Ha. Huh? So every day Cody's going to hide that spy cam. I got to try to find it. That, that was pretty easy. Good. Off to a good start there. Let's talk about earnings here today. Uh, nope. That's the spy cam. Earnings. Um, why do we look at earnings? What? Who cares, right? If you're an investor, why are you looking at earnings? I'm going to try to quantify this here for you. So when we look at earnings, they are the four most important days of the year for a stock. And I say that with data to back me up. I don't say that to scare you, right? So on earnings day, the average S&P 500 stock averages a gain or loss of 5% you know, like some stocks are going to push more than others, right? But plus or minus 5%. That makes them the four most important days of the year because what else, usually you don't get movement like that over the course of one day. So that's why we focus on earnings so much. And I kind of talk about these things as not so much that they're trades, but more that you want to pay attention to what's going on. That's your one chance every quarter to see if your belief in what the stock is doing is that that you know, as far as your um, uh, assumption goes, right? So uh, let us take a look here and see what we've got. I'm gonna go through a couple things here for you because you've got the earnings list there. And we're gonna start, um, actually that list is not updated. It didn't update. So we're gonna go over here. We'll do it the old fashioned way. Uh, Spirit Airlines. So Spirit Airlines is first on my list here. They see demand pick back up. Remember, they packed those planes full. They weren't too big on having that middle seat empty. I can, I can vouch for that personally. Uh, they, they just crammed them in there, right? You have to wait six feet apart while you're waiting to get on the plane. But as soon as you get on the plane, you sit down, right? <laughs> just get in a seat. Doesn't matter if you're rubbing hair elbow with the guy next to you or whatever. Um, they saw demand pick up. However, it was in the last few days of the quarter. So we're likely going to see that come into um, this next quarter. Because of that, they guided higher there. Um, what I found interesting was it's known as non-ticket revenue. It, it's the money they make off all the garbage that's outside of the ticket price. So it may cost you 30 bucks to fly across the country or whatever they charge, right? But all that extra stuff that you pay for, carry on baggage, check baggage and all that, that's where they made the money on that one. So now approaching $58 is their average non-ticket revenue, whereas some flights are cheaper than that. So that was pretty cool. Did a little research to look back in time. They started, uh, they went public in 2011, I think. But if you go back to their 2006 data, their non-ticket revenue was at five bucks. They used to make $5 on average per person per ticket sold on stuff that wasn't the ticket. It's up to $58 now, which darn near competes with the price of the plane tickets there. So think about that when you're shopping for plane tickets. Anyways, the stock, if we look at it today, uh, down just a little bit on the news, which I'll cover in a second because that's happening a lot more than we like to see. I'll show you here in just a second. Las Vegas Sands, basically in line. Our earnings were fine. I mean, there was nothing really exciting there if you look through Las Vegas Sands. Um, I tried to dig a little bit deeper looking for some stuff as far as growth goes, and it's Macau. Growth in Macau is unbelievable. You've got uh, the Venetian and the Parisian. They're two biggest growth uh, properties over in Macau, which is a big part of their business, so it's got to be paid attention to there. Uh, Chipotle is kind of interesting to me. It sold off about, well, only about 2% here. Check this out. On Chipotle, they're digital sales. Uh, pick up your phone and, and you know order and then go in the store and you grab it off the shelf. Up 124%, which officially makes their digital sales 50% of their revenue. Man, they did the COVID thing right, man. They, they did a good job there. 92% of all locations are open for dine-in, but that's only 50% of their income or revenue. So, eh, right? Who cares if they're open or not? Um, now, they said weaknesses are due to opening more locations and higher input costs per store. However, they're still historically low. So I think investors didn't get this one wrong today. I think they just overreacted here because we did a little research for you. Check this out. Uh, their input costs. Stay with me. This is what we got here. This is this quarter. Input, uh, labor input costs. In other words, as a percentage of their revenue, how much of it is labor? About 25%. So 25% of what you buy there goes to labor. This is the previous first quarter. This is the previous. And so we should have put a little thing there, but this is 2020, uh, sorry, 2021. This is 2020, 2019, 2018. 
So their input costs as far as labor goes, they can't argue that labor costs are higher because uh, compared to the last three first quarters, it's lower. Now you look at food and beverage packaging, your bags, uh, the bowl that they put it in there, the red thing that they got to buy so you put your thing in there when you're sitting down there. We're right at 30%. 30% is food uh, packaging, setup, cups, and all that great stuff, the forks and knives and all that. It's lower than it has been. So this kind of leans you to a couple things. You go, all right, digital sales are up. That means packaging may be a little bit less because they don't even, some of the stores, you, you can't even get a fork, right? They used to just plop them in the little cups there. Not the case. So you know those are going to be lower. Labor, I would argue, might start to get higher, especially in some of the states that they're in. But does that not make this pullback at least a considerable buy? Like, you, you consider it, not like seriously do it. I think you got to look into something like that. Anyways, that's Chipotle. Let's go to Discover Financial. Discover Financial beats on earnings by ah, 79%. Not bad, right? I mean, these stocks are just killing it in terms of earnings there. They continue to see huge numbers in terms of how they report their earnings there. Not only that, every other stock out there is doing the same thing right now. Uh, so their beat comes because they see less charge-offs. So the virus hit, everybody goes home, a lot of people lost their jobs, people that work in restaurants couldn't go to work. Virus hits and uh, Discover, JP Morgan, Citigroup, all of them said, holy cow, we better put some money off to the side because a lot of people aren't gonna be paying their bills and we're gonna have to pay for all of that. So they saw a whole lot less than that. It came in at just 2.48% versus 3.21% uh, in the first quarter last year. Thanks, right? So the government sort of bailed them out by giving everybody money, right? Because they didn't, they ended up paying their bills. That's kind of what that tells you there. Anyways, personal loan charge-offs were only 2.8%. That's low for them. Credit cards about the same, actually exactly the same, 2.8%. And student loan charge-offs only 0.55%, those personal ones that they have. They guided over 10% higher than Wall Street expects, and they're gonna raise their dividend and start buying back more shares for Discover. Not bad. Uh, next, we'll look at American Airlines here. Uh, lost about 4% on the day. They lost, oh, $1.25 billion last quarter, which is less than the, than before, uh, the quarter before at about $2 billion. Uh, cash burn. These guys burn through $30 million a day. That's lower than what they had previously been burning through, $44 million. So you're like, wow. Okay. <laughs> and remember load factor. We talked about this a couple days ago. Load factor at 59% compared to, uh, I think it was 72% previously. They said the same things as the other ones there. Uh, Southwest said the same thing. Um, darn it. Where did it go? Uh, demand. They're all talking, uh, Spirit Airlines, they're all talking about the same thing. Demand is rapidly coming back. That's basically what every single one of them said. Um, but for now, price is a little bit lower because that load factor. Uh, AT&T up 4%. That's well above what it normally does. They beat 10% higher than what Wall Street had expected there. And you know what's funny about this? I share this one with you because of what we talked about on Verizon yesterday. So AT&T adds 823,000 wireless subscribers. What, what did we talk about yesterday? Verizon lost 170,000 subscribers. Well, we know where some of them went, right? They went to AT&T. So they actually did well there, and that was the whole reason for their beat um, going forward there. So we know what's going on now. Just a quick little analysis. We can kind of see where people are moving. I don't know why. And lastly, we'll go Dr. Horton here. They killed it. Killed it. The stock was up uh, almost 2%. Revenues 4% higher than expected. Earnings 16% higher than expected. I'm emphasizing this because these are large numbers. This doesn't normally happen that you see things like this. Uh, they raised their guidance because they are seeing 35% growth on their orders for new homes. 35%. You, re you realize we're approaching this point in time where new cars are going to be uh, used cars are going to be dramatically more expensive than new cars because there's not going to be a lot of new cars there and you're not going to be able to buy a home soon. There's a lot of shifts going on in the market right now. I just think it's kind of fascinating, right? I'm not saying it's bad. Who knows if it's bad? I just, it's interesting. Um, oh, in Europe, by the way, I, you know, I, I follow my candy. In Europe, Nestle, they beat on earnings because they're raising prices and people are paying for it. I guess I'm paying for it too. I like I like my candy. Uh, and then in Sweden, if you follow Volvo, I just happened to was looking around the world. Uh, Volvo said that their truck orders. Remember, you think of them as cars, but they're really big in the trucks. They pull the the semi truck uh, trailers. Uh, truck orders were up 123 percent over in you know over in Europe, and in the United States, 
369% higher. Y you think we're snapping back? I mean, like, wow, a lot going on there. Uh, anyway, so that's what I have for you there in terms of uh, the earnings. Now, oh, I wanted to show you here. Let me go, uh, uh, let, me, let me just buy a little time here. Um, so I wanted to show you that the average stock is actually, even if they beat on earnings, it's not going well. Earnings season is going well as far as the individual company reporting their fundamentals, but it's not going well for the stock performance. This may or may not work. A little spreadsheet action here. There you go. All right, here is, as of yesterday, uh, this is the uh, first quarter earnings performance. I've got the stock. I've got where they closed just because I was doing some math here. Their earnings versus what the estimates were. So if their earnings beat, then I colored it in green. Right? If they, if they didn't beat, I didn't color it in red, I just left it. Right? So look at all the earnings beats here. All the earnings beats, there's only a handful of them that didn't beat, we'll cover some more in a second. Revenue versus expectations, right? so that's over here. If they beat, it's in green. If they didn't, I left it alone. And then the stock's performance, the gap, the, full, the day, the, the intraday I should have called it, and then the full entire day's performance. What's going on here? There's a lot of numbers to look at, but let's scroll to the bottom. Took all of this information, there's the bottom, and we find that 92% of stocks, as of yesterday, are beating on earnings, 80% are beating on revenue. That is way above average if you look at any five-year, 10-year, 15-year history, but the average gap is to the downside. The average intraday move is to the downside even more. The average move for the stock on earnings is about a loss of 1%. That's not normal, right? If you look back over the last five years, the average uh, full day move is actually positive. So this earnings season is not starting off well. The pressure is to the downside, even if you beat on earnings. And we keep seeing that over and over and over again. Uh, what does that tell you? It means c people are happy with the way the stock is performing, but they can't justify the price of the stock where it's at. Think of the big cap uh, stocks. Think of those higher multiple stocks that if you filter by any sort of financial metric, you go, they're doing well, but how do I chase it, right? So people are choosing to sell on the news of earnings here so far is the uh, overall theme that I probably could have just said in one second and spared you all of that. All right, stocks in the news. Let's take a look and see. We've got Spotify. Uh, well, Spotify and Match Group. Spotify and Match Group are uh, continuing their uh, outcry to say that Apple and Google are really abusing the App Store power that they have. They're trying to keep that thing going so that we can sort of decentralize how that works. Uh, Dish is uh, riding on Amazon's coattails from yesterday, all that excitement, but also they're going to start a sports betting channel with DraftKings there. So sports betting is one of those areas that's just going gangbusters right now, and that's the latest news on that. Uh, Ford is actually planning on more production downtime because of the semiconductors. They, they, can't, they can't build these cars. If they can get the aluminum, sure, it costs more. They can get the metals and all that. They can get all the cloth. They, can, they just can't get the chips uh, to make these, uh, these cars and trucks there. And if you look over in uh, Japan, Suzuki, uh, I know, who, who, <laughs> who drives a Suzuki anymore? But uh, they're going to have to cut production as well. That doesn't necessarily move markets, but it is interesting. Uh, Disney closed the day lower there, uh, but they have a deal with Sony to essentially take away from Netflix. So they're going to get all of Sony's sort of content library to come over to Disney Plus once their Netflix deal is up on that case. So Disney Plus continuing to take uh, make good progress there. And Coinbase, c careful. Every time I say Coinbase, I'm going to say careful. Right? This is a tough stock to pay any of these prices for, as I've been saying since it went public there. Uh, Mizzou, uh, popular research firm there, they had an analyst target. Uh, they started coverage. You're going to see this a lot where analysts go, all right, it's good enough. We know enough about the company. We have a pr price target. We have a, a, a suggestion or a rating on the stock, sell, buy, hold, whatever. They start coverage and they put the price target at 285, which I think is generous but they put it at 285, the stock's not trading at 285. It was nowhere near, it was at 385 just a few days ago. So careful on that one, please be careful. I know it's exciting, but don't let emotions get in the way of what is financially crazy, if you would. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll let the stream catch up. I'll try to take your questions. Otherwise, I'm gonna get ready for the closing beat here, or no, the uh, Wine and Wealth class here tonight. We've got earnings. 
Uh, but you have tons of earnings. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna rattle them all off. Regions Financial comes out, Honeywell, uh, Schlumberger will be an interesting one to take a look at tomorrow, and American Express, of course. Uh, you've got uh, dividends from Caterpillar at dollar three coming out, um, and Fastenal twenty eight cents. So much more going on there, and uh, our uh, Marine Max HZO didn't finish as strong as it was, but we happen to own this stock, and it's it's been very nice to us. But uh, Great Gap killed it on earnings, killed it, and uh, there's just no sign of stopping there. Now the price is a different argument, but the company's fundamentals on fire, on fire. Yep. <clears throat> Giovanni bought some Tesla May $21,000 calls. Oh, because I see what you're doing there. Um, <laughs> what, I, what do I say to that? <laughs> so never, ever, ever, even if earnings are coming up, buy an out-of-the-money call. N not to mention that far out of the money. Just why? What do you expect there? I mean, I know we. I want to see them do well. I want the company to be wildly successful and everything. Uh, I like what they're doing, and I like the personalities and all that. But uh, you have to statistically break it down for you. At this very moment, you have a 3.47 percent chance of getting to a thousand dollars by your deadline. I don't like those odds, man. I, I don't. They don't need to be 50/50 if you got a strong belief. But I don't know about 3.47 percent. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough one. Chris says the uh, Democrats take power in a difficult economy. Actually, we broke through that uh, with clients. Uh, in our dojo, um, you can go back and look and see um, as the election was going on and stuff and everybody was either this way or this way, I said, well, let's just talk about the market. So we did uh, breakdowns of how the um, elections affect markets, how changes of power affect markets, how con continuation of power affect markets, uh, just performance under Democrats, Republicans. We went through it all. Um, so that way it's, you know, like at the end of the day, I mean, whoever's the president, we got to deal with whatever's going on. But uh, it's nice to know, like, what's happened through history and stuff. I like looking at that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. <laughs> You love the hair today. What's the matter with my hair, man? Why is everybody picking on my hair? I'm just. Sh you think they mean it again? Oh, it's just people on the internet are so mean. I just. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, I guess yeah, it does look good. Maybe I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. But but thank you. Uh, you had a question there. Um, can you get a question? Uh, you see it the one well oh all right so you, he's being nice there all right <laughs> um oh what's going on here there we go so um you are looking what was the ticker symbol you going outside the country let me see can i go outside the country on this one gp or why yeah i can all right so here you go japanese railroad company back to the 200 day moving average um these are tough to give a technical analysis on because we are really just looking at the price action uh, that happened overseas. It's a reset of the price action. What I like about it is, who invented these candlesticks? Hmm? Who invented them? Were they A, American, B, Swiss, C, South African, or D, Japanese? Cody, who invented the candlestick? Swiss. He says D, Japanese, very good. <laughs> so, uh, so they're known as Japanese candlesticks. That's where it came from there. And so the fact that you're looking at doing, normally I would say I, don't, I can't rely on technical analysis on uh, an, a stock that's out of the country there. But the Japanese really believe in their technical analysis, especially if you've ever been over there and watched them analyze stocks or even look at their stock exchange. So the fact that it's on the 200-day moving average, I would not be the first to assume it's going to bounce. But if you start to see that, I think you can rely on it a little bit more than if it was you know, uh, a European or Australian types uh, ADR. Sorry for that answer, but yeah, there you go. We got a couple guests in there. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, it's perfectly on topic, uh, on topic, William. Are the four fingers on your hand the same size and length as the other hand? I find your four fingers fascinating. 
Your friend has 12 toes. I'm glad I don't have an extra finger. Let's put it that way. But yeah, they're the same size. Everything's the same. They're big too, by the way. These hands. <laughs> we were just joking about a little Marco Rubio the other day, but they're, um, yeah, they're the same. Just one less. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Going politics now. I like politics when it comes to money, so I am disappointed to see taxes going up and because and, you just know that there's no way they're going to start here and stay here. You know, that income level is going down. I worry about that, but I have no, nothing to go on yet, so we'll, we'll give everybody their chance. Um, you just know there's tax changes coming. There's already, I'm subscribed to every financial planning company, news tip, whatever it is, and they're all planning for it. I mean, it's, it's, it's what has to happen when we spend so much, and that goes for any president. All of our presidents spend way too much money, and at some point, some president has to say, well, we're going to have to pay this back somehow. We're going to end up like Japan. Anyways, we'll see. Uh, we will see. But anyways, Wine and Wealth tonight. Hope you join us there. Uh, we'll get started at 8 o'clock and uh, do some fun stuff. Talk about PMI here tonight. Maybe a little elementary for some of you, but we're going to go through and try to figure out uh, how to make the rest of you look at a dollar a little bit differently, right? And just not sort of willy-nilly make decisions. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for stopping by here today. We will uh, catch you tonight for coming by. And uh, adios. Adios.